Welcome to the Pit Village Podcast. Thanks a lot for joining in. Now, today we're going to talk about fear and self-doubt. Of course, we all go through this. We all go through this self-doubt. And in my estimation, it's the biggest killer of innovation and technology and music. You know, without if everybody gave it to the self-doubt, there'd be no cars, there'd be no planes, there'd be no railroads, there'd be no, there'd be no nothing. They'd still be in the caves. So, for many people... They don't set themselves a large enough aim to even experience self-doubt. So they leave things foggy. They have no parameters for success or for failure. Therefore, life is easy. There's no goal. There's no purpose. Okay, if that's yourself, no worries. But for the rest of us, we have these dreams. We have these goals. But what gets in our way is fear. Fear of failure. Fear of the perception of others if we do fail. And fear of success for many people because that means change. Success means you've got to change and you've got to adapt to take on the responsibilities that come with that success. Running a business, it's not fun and games. You don't just collect money and then see you later. You've got to take on the responsibility of that business. So for many people, they run away from that. But for many, they just give up before they even get started because they gave in due to self-doubt and fear. Now, fear is false evidence appearing real or a fantasized experience appearing real. There's all these little acronyms, isn't there, which is all fun and games. But what I would really want to talk about is self-doubt and overcoming fear. So a couple of different points on this. There's a summary here of The 50th Law by Robert Greene, uh, a continuation of The 48 Laws of Power with 50 Cent. Let's just talk about overcoming fear. So crave realism. You've got to crave reality. He says reality is my drug. The more I get of it, the higher that I feel. It's then about being open. And of course, developing your expertise, knowing it's going to take a long time to develop expertise and success, mastery, not getting bored of something, having disdain for anybody who gets in the way of you becoming independent and allowing you to become self-reliant and make your own decisions. Again, taking everything as an opportunity, being grateful for both the blessings and sometimes being able to overcome the challenges that come in life. It's all about how you see things. Keep moving, maintain some momentum in life. These are all some of the main points from this book. Now, to overcome fear, you are going to have to do this. You are going to have to overcome the hurdles in life and see things as challenges rather than blocks that are in the way. You are going to have to develop self-reliance and make some decisions by yourself without relying on other people for you to call up and, oh, hey, what do you think? Should I do this? Should I do that? If you can't make your own decision firm... That means you've not really got any plan. Because if you're, oh, I'm going to get this job, I'm going to get this job, and one's in recruitment, one's in marketing, and one's in sales, and where do you want to be in five years? You're going to any of these businesses, and you're telling them, oh, I'm going to interview tomorrow in marketing, and yesterday in recruitment, he's going to be thinking, yeah, what, what, where do you want to be? And you need to know where you want to be, because if not, there'll always be a plan B. There'll always be grass is greener on the other side. You need to commit yourself to something for a decade, and then the self-doubt and the fear, it sort of goes away because you become content with working towards a mastery. Again, 50 Cent in this book makes some great points in the fact that he says people become bored. We've got a pattern that boredom. We can't master anything because we, we start something, get bored, start something else, get bored, start something else. And then we wonder why we're unhappy. This is the exact point that he makes. It's not possible to get good at something without going through that boredom and that everything's new at first, so it's all well and good. But then it's about overcoming the, oh, well, it's just another day. And by having a large goal that you're working towards, you can overcome that feeling because that other day is building skills and, you know, you're looking towards mastery. You're looking towards mastering something. What is wrong with that? You're looking towards a 10-year goal. So the day becomes irrelevant, whether you're bored or not, becomes irrelevant because... It's a long-term goal that, that serves you. And again, going back to the parameters for success and failure, if you don't set yourself a purpose and a long-term goal, how can you fail? Back to this book, they say, the key is the level of your desire. That is the key to it. If you're really after power and mastery, then you'll absorb this idea, idea deeply and engrave it into your mind. There are no shortcuts. You'll distrust everything that is fast and easy. You will endure the initial months of dull, repetitive labour because you have an overall goal. Progress through trial and error. 
master something simple, internalise the rules of the game, attune yourself to the details. It's all in the... These ideas, the work, it's... it's when you look at stuff and it's about self-belief and building self-reliance and, and you go back to the original personal development books, we did a, I did a summary last week on Think and Grow Rich, from the desire to the persistence to the obsession, all in it is in the book, daily goal setting in order to achieve your larger aim and working towards a meticulous plan of action with steadfast resolution. So these, these, these words, they're not meaningless. You've got to think about them, internalize them, and then move forward practically using this. Because when we're trying to read books and cram ourselves with information, what, what, what good is that until you practice it in your life? Right, I've set this aim, I've set this goal, and I've achieved it. That increases your faith in yourself. This is an internal struggle. This is not anything external. Nobody can help you. You need to stop seeking the validation and the opinion from other people because how do they know what you want? Particularly if you don't even know what you want. How can they guide you in the right way if you don't know it? They can't anyway. Even if you knew what you wanted, you've got to go out there and get it for yourself. And this is what it's about, developing the self-reliance again, back to the key points. Having disdain for anybody who gets in the way of you, achieving what you want to achieve and controlling your own time. So... You all experience self-doubt. And for a lot of us, it comes from as expectations. First off, we either give in and don't expect a lot from ourselves, so then, then therefore it is easy. Or we expect a lot from the effort that we're putting in. Right, so I make a podcast. Nobody views it. Nobody cares. But the aim is to make people care in two years' time or three or five years' time. Who's to say when something good comes from this? Nobody is to say that. And I can't even tell you that. I'm doing it because I've got a passion for it. And I think it's a long-term business. I'm, I'm going to build some business acumen in this space that I'll be able to utilize long-term in business-to-business -business podcasting. This is the reason why I speak into this microphone every day. I've called it Marathon March. I'm not doing this for my ego. I'm doing it to build skills. For the first week, it was great. But then you've, you've hit all the topics. I've talked about everything in my life. So now it's about going into ideas such as this and, and building podcasts around ideas and having to come up with content. This has now become a chore. It's not, it's, you know, it's a task I've got to complete every day in order to put a video out and build this skill. So the boredom and all that's already coming in. But I've internalized all these beliefs and I know why I'm doing it. I know why I continue to come up with these ideas. I know that I'm building skills. I know this is great for my life. So therefore, I keep doing it even when I don't feel like doing it. And it's about being a professional or an amateur. And again, back to the expectations. A couple of laws here. We've got one called the backwards law. It's from the philosopher Alan Watts, modern day philosopher. The idea that the more you pursue feeling better all the time, the less satisfied you become. As pursuing something only reinforces the fact that you lack it in the first place. The more desperately you want to be rich, the more poor and unworthy you feel, regardless of how much money you make. The more desperately you want to be sexy and desired, the uglier you come to see yourself, regardless of your actual physical appearance. The more desperately you want to be happier and loved, the lonelier and more afraid you become, regardless of those who surround you. And isn't it true? The grass is always greener on the other side. While ever you're looking for the next best thing, you don't appreciate what you have. You haven't got the gratitude that it actually takes for those things that you want to come into your life over time. We can't have everything at once. And our internal motivation systems are set up for this. We're set up to seek new things. So we set ourselves goals. And quite often, the incentive to work towards a goal is better than the satisfaction of achieving the goal. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like the anticipation of the meal is often better than the meal. The anticipation of the movie is better than the movie. That's how as brains are wired up. So we need to we need to recognize this. And then once we do achieve our aim and we start to become complacent, bored, all these things, set ourselves new aims. This is, it's about reassessing every every year, every six months, whenever you start feeling it inside you that, ooh, I'm getting a bit complacent here. Right, reassess where am I going? What do I do on a daily basis in order to get there? And do I want to be in the top 3% of this industry? Well, yes. So therefore, 
I need to work 10, 12 hours every day to get there. So if your aim is really high, you're going to work all the time and you're going to study and you're going to get better. And I pick something that I enjoy. I know I just said, well, daddy, it's a chore and boring, but that's what things become when you've got responsibilities. When I've said I'm going to do one every single day, what if I don't feel like doing it that day? And I'm not going to pre-record it. This is on the 19th of March. I'm going to release this tomorrow for the 20th. So this is the game. It's about mastery. But also, it's about recognising the fact that we are set up like this. So if you're always looking for the, oh, I want this and I want that, I want the next thing. I mean, I could have a million pound a year and be envious of somebody who was earning 500 million pound a year or 5 million pound a year, whatever. But you can always be envious of the people who have got more than you instead of recognising the fact that, well, where have I come from? What have I built? What have I got? Being grateful for that. Knowing where that has come from, the obsession and the persistence and working towards daily targets to achieve your long-term goal. And then rebuilding another life with another large goal that's going to transform your life once again. So this is where I believe we need to be. And another law that I've got for you. So we've just gone through the law, the backwards law. And then we've got the law of reversed effort. It says we cannot consciously will ourselves to do something. For instance, if you're trying to go to sleep, you cannot will yourself to sleep. It has the opposite effect. You will not sleep. Now, if you want to float and you're swimming, you will start to sink. If you want to sink and try and push yourself down, you will start to float and push it, you know. If I lay a board on the floor in your living room, you will quite easily just walk over that. But if I laid the same board between two skyscrapers, you would not walk over it because your mind would take over with fear. Your imagination would take over. Well, I can fall. And you'd not do it. You'd be paralyzed. Your subconscious would not allow you to walk over that. You cannot consciously will yourself to walk over it. You could, but you'd be full of fear. And that would be justified. That is a rational fear. Of course, we need a little bit of fear and anxiety to live in his life. But this is about not giving in to self-doubt and the fear of maybe failure in a business or being perceived from other people as a failure because you've got to downgrade your house to take a career in another industry to build your skills in that industry. It doesn't matter what the fear is about, but most of us, we've got, we've got, a lot of self-doubt, we internalise that self-doubt, whether it's, whether the doubt is coming from others and people are sort of questioning your abilities or it's just come from your own self-worth and your own self-beliefs about your standards of living. Or it's look Uxley on the law of reversed effort. The harder we try to conscious, the harder we try with the conscious will to do something, the less we shall succeed. We cannot make ourselves understand the most we can do is foster a state of mind in which understanding may come to us. I like this. That's called the law of reversed effort. There's then the backwards law, which, which we just discussed, always wanting more, rather than being appreciative of what you've got. So where can you, where can you take this? First off, recognise, are you fearful? Is that a rational fear? Or is it irrational? Are you... Do you fill yourself with self-doubt? Do you not yourself? And when, when, when you do think, well, I could do this and I could be doing this, and you've got this ideal self in your mind, the ideal self, who you want to be, and you're not working towards that, why is that? Why is that? Have you just sort of gave in on, on your dreams and your goals? Have you succumbed? And, you know, are you in a victim mentality and think everything is a external factor that's been pushed onto you? It's not your fault, but it's because of this and this and this and this. So a lot of us, we don't want to take the responsibility that comes with the success and the growth that's required in order to succeed. So we're giving to this self-doubt because it's a lot easier to remain unchanged. So again, thanks a lot for your time. It's a Pit Village podcast sponsored by Prospect 27. We'll have more out next week. It's a marathon march, one every single day. Well, there'll be another out tomorrow. This will be released on Saturday the 20th. Like I said, it's the 19th today. We're doing these every single day, getting them out there, as well as running a business. It's Prospect 27, pay monthly websites, prospect27.co.uk. Thanks a lot for your time. We're always looking to interview new people like Peter from yesterday, Peter Watkins, Blue Penguin Accountancy. Check that out. Interview from yesterday. But plenty more coming up, plenty more booked in. If you are looking to get on the Pit Village podcast and speak, about what you're doing in your business and how you've got your life together. That'd be great. It's interviews at pitvillagepodcast.co.uk. 
Thanks a lot for your time. See you tomorrow. Bye.